I was shocked to find a lot of the stuff. I know the girls that were in the class with me were shocked to find the extent of material that we found. I don't remember exactly when it was when I first saw the 1913 yearbook and the 1910 yearbook, um, but I've certainly shocked when I saw it. It is unambiguously clan related. It is unambiguously a hooded figure, in one case holding a burning cross. And part of me, as a historian, threw it into context and said, oh my goodness, well, this was the South at the beginning of the 20th century. But part of me said, wow, um, this is a story we need to tell and a story we need to add some context to. There's no other word for it. It was a kind of sort of brutal hazing. You see lots of classes writing about it in the yearbook and other um, student publications. It's secret, but they all sort of talk about it as something that involves being woken up in the middle of the night. Um, there are often burnings in effigy. In some cases, we have evidence that um, the students were forced to wear nooses, um, although we don't know. Um, exactly when that happened and we know that there were there were hoods there were drums this was meant to feel like some sort of big secret ritual it is good that it's coming up because Wesleyan the Wesleyan students, staff, and faculty, we need to know our history and what Wesleyan was built on. And when I was looking into colleges uh, during high school, the woman who told me about Wesleyan um, suggested that I look up the Tri-Cape Pirates and what the Tri-Cape Pirates meant. Um, so I did some research and, um, about the Tri-Cape Pirates and learned the extensive history, the really deeply rooted history that the Tri-Cape Pirates had in the Ku Klux Klan. And when I came to Wesleyan already aware of that, um, I took my um, you know, research further and got in uh, contact with the archivist here at Wesleyan's campus and went through old yearbooks and uh, different annuals and um, d just uh, historic artifacts that had very racist uh, themes and, and you know, traditions that Wesleyan has altered today, but are still present on Wesleyan's campus. But I also believe in those traditions that we have, there's an underlying theme of racism that needs to be addressed. And if it's not addressed, people need to know that it's at least there. And having that history, you need to know what you're being a part of, especially uh, myself as an African-American woman. Um, I would want to know any tradition that I'm a part of, if it has some type of underlying theme that I wouldn't have been a part of. And, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. So I think it's really important for Wesleyan to bring forth that history and to talk about it openly. Hey, this is what we were before, but this is what we are now. And let me explain to you what these specific traditions are. It's important now because um, when we work with students and with each other about issues of race and, and, diversity, and race, diversity and inclusion, we can't ignore what happened in the past. And students, of all races appropriately ask us about the past and we have to be we have to be able to tell them acknowledge the past and also acknowledge that that's not who we are now <laughs>